Thank you for coming on The French Connection, Mary, of course, joining me. And, of course, Sam, 1977 French Open Mixed Doubles champion with John McEnroe. Let's just put that out there, first of all. Mary, nice. thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk all things French Open leading into the Olympics. But, my friend, thank you for joining us today. It's, it's nice to be here. And, and, Sam, you may not know this, but... Uh, the 77 French Open Mixed Doubles was John McEnroe's first major title. It was my last, but let's not go into that. Yeah. How do you like that, my friend? That's impressive. Go. That's a, that's an amazing little uh, tidbit you'll right. have forever. From there, he kind of took off. Watch John's career. Without that win, there's no John McEnroe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All right. What I'm do you want to talk about? I, I, I want to know, first of all, Mary, I just put this in the background. I don't know if you can see that. This is my Mixed Doubles runner-up at the French Open. Um, so you have that over me, my friend. Yeah, um, I was a loser there and you were a winner. Um, but let's get, tell me, tell me your favorite memories on and off the court, basically in Paris. I mean, on the court, obviously the only thing I've, I've ever done <laughs> was standing next to John McEnroe when he won the French Open mix doubles. And I just, you know, try not to gag all over the court, but I mean, <laughs> Off the court, I've been in the booth, and I tend to stay a lot longer at the French Open when I'm not playing, but I'm just talking about it. So I've gotten to see Rafa's entire run. I've seen Serena and Cher. I've seen, I've I've been doing this for a long, long time. I've 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 gotten to call dozens of French Opens. It happens to be my favorite. I love clay. I love I love watching people figure out how to play on clay. So um, I've been and Paris. I mean, come on. There's a couple of things you can do there couple of things to see. So. Absolutely. Is there one match over the years? You've called matches for, for decades now. Is there mm. a French Open match that stands out in your head as, as kind of the best match you've ever watched? Well, obviously, the Nadal-Federer matches weren't always great. Actually, the one time that Roger Federer won in 2009, uh, it wasn't a good match. I was in the booth with Ted Robinson and John McEnroe. And but towards the end of the match, he was winning so easily, Roger, and he's finally going to win this one major that he wasn't ever sure he could win. And he starts jamming up. He starts crying, you know, like you could see that he's. So I, I, I talked to my producer, you know, the cough, bat, uh, the cough button. And I said, you know, John, I'm, I'm going to stop talking, you know, let's just, you know, let's just show Raj, you know, going through all this. And then Ted got quiet and then even John got quiet and that was the best part of, of the whole match was that Roger finally came good on that surface. Um, it wasn't a great match, but it was a great moment, if you ask yeah. me. That. Beating Robin Soderling in the final that year. Exactly right. Exactly right. That's right. And Robin was never to be seen again. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mary, um, you know, when you sit up in the booth, like, explain the importance of seeing – tennis also on red clay we don't get to see that very much but the beauty of the french open mm. you know and and the beauty of playing on clay and how, just explain to people why it's so different than playing on any other grand slam surface i mean uh, to, to my mind clay is the game's classroom uh it's why so many europeans have dominated tennis for so long now um you learn how to defend, you learn how to attack, you learn how to move, you learn how to go from offense to defense, back to offense again. Points are, are complicated. You manage the court differently. Um, it's it, for, for that reason, uh, I think clay court tennis and clay court tennis players are really special. What about you? Yeah, well, I mean, I wanted to ask you on that, you know, you, you obviously very good friends with um, Chris Evert. So mm. you, you're talking about Chris Evert and you're talking about Rafa, you know. Yeah. So just compare those two because you have seen them both through the years mm. compete and win the way that they have done so well on, you know, the, 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 the clay in Paris. So just, you know, your connection with both of those two great players at the French Open. Yeah, I mean, Rafa is a, a beast, um, you know, he... Uh, yeah, you you see how physical he is, how how mentally strong he is. Chrissy was much lighter on the court, but she managed the court again so well. Uh, she had so much concentration and focus and drive, and Clay allowed her to beat players who were bigger and stronger, right? Who could hit harder. Uh, she would keep a rally going, and she'd move the, she'd move the ball around, manage the middle of the court, and then all of a sudden, she might hit her forehand. That, that was just a little higher than the last one, you know, or dip her back in just a little lower. And, and all of a sudden, 
her opponent was slightly off balance, perhaps without even knowing it. And that's when Chrissy would make her move. I mean, she was, she was something else. Rafa won twice as many French Opens as Chris. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Remember when we used to say Bjorn Borg was the greatest clay court player uh, on the men's yeah. side? You know, he won 6-0. I mean, Rafa's just, uh, he's just remarkable. I, I, I don't know that, that you can ever beat that feat. Um, never. It'll never be broken. No I, way. It's arguably the greatest feat in, in sports, in all of sports, with that I, record and that dominance. I, I, I can't so. think of anything off the top of my head that's more impressive. No, I, I can't either, Sam. So take me into the mindset of Rafa. Do you think that, you know, Sam and I um, talked about this yesterday. What Do you think that the French Open should be Rafa's last event? Uh, um, a friend of mine is actually working on a, a Nadal documentary, um, and they've spent a lot of time uh, talking to Rafa and his coaches and his family, his wife. Uh, it, it sure seems like his team of family and coaches want the French Open to be his final uh, his final appearance, but Rafa is fighting that, you know, um, he's not ready to say, yeah, I'm going to, this is the end for me. Um, so that it will, it will be interesting to see if that changes in the coming, in the coming weeks. Um, we know that he's talking about playing doubles, uh, at the Olympics with Carlos Alcaraz, and that would be something to see. He's already said he's going to play the labor cup, which I still consider to be an exhibition. Uh, after because the, it is, well, because because it is, um, everyone seems to now want to retire at Labor Cup. You know, after Roger did, uh, <laughs> now it sounds like Rafa wants to do that. You know, when <laughs> it's uh, I, it would be something glorious, I think, if he were to decide to put down his rackets in Paris. But who who knows? What do you, where where are you guys landing on that? That's what I want. As a, as a tennis yeah. fan, I touched on this the other day with Renee. I want it to be at the Open. Even if he doesn't go out and, and win or play yeah. great, that's where his legacy has, was built. Federer's was more at Wimbledon and the Labor Cup. The world wants Rafa to end it at the French Open. That's, I, what, that's what everyone wants. He wants. That's where the, the goodbye should be. That's where his story needs to end. So I'm hoping for that to be his last event. So Me too. Guys, it sounds like you guys don't think he's going to win the French Open. Uh, no. No, I guess, yes. If I had to place a bet down, I wouldn't be on him, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it, no matter what happens this year, he's going down as the, as the greatest clay quarter ever, and that will probably be forever. Right. And, and, and just, to, just to go back to how Roger Federer, I mean, he, he wanted – Wimbledon was his, was his great event – um, but the last time he played Wimbledon, he lost in straight sets. Oh, in the third. Remember that? That's not how we wanted to go out. So yeah, Labor, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to see Rafa go down like that, but, uh, God damn it. He was great. <laughs> poor, no, he poor, was. poor old, uh, poor old Herbie Hercot just put, you know, put basically Roger into, uh, into retirement. And then the other day, I think he might've mentally put Rafa in retirement yeah, exactly. <laughs> in Rome. So, uh, and he's the nicest guy on tour. So, you know, that's a, but Mary, you know, through the years, Roland Garros has certainly changed. I mean, Chartrier got an upgrade. The bull ring is no more. We love yeah. the bull ring court back in the day, even though I hated it because I always lost on that court. And now, you know, Simone Mathieu, now is like maybe one of the best courts in tennis. So just yeah. your thoughts also on the changing atmosphere at, at Roland Garros and, and sort of through the years, you've seen the upgrades, you've seen mm -hmm. what they've tried to do because it's very small. Yeah, you can't just expand it like the Australian Open. We get to expand it a little bit easier because we have the help of the government. But yes. what about that from your perspective? Yeah, the continent of Australia gets to do whatever the hell. Right, is. unlimited right. land there. <laughs> um, uh, but the French Open has the smallest footprint of the four majors. So to make great advances is tricky and you got to get all kinds of, yeah, you have to go through the neighbors and they, I, we don't want it, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm so excited that the Olympics will be played, will be played there because uh, experiencing Roland Garros, the players already know how special it is. And it's going to be a tricky maneuver for them to go from clay, this clay court season, to a couple of weeks of grass, including Wimbledon, and then go back to clay because normally after Wimby, it's all hard courts. So who who are the players who can pull that off the best? I mean, we know Novak can do it. I mean, we know that uh, 
uh, Sabalenka is great at that. You know, um, it'll be interesting to see who that favors, you know, how well everyone has paced themselves. The, the heart, the tricky thing about this year's French Open, uh, it's like it feels wide open, not because everyone's playing well, but because everyone seems injured. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And changing so, surfaces is a tricky deal, as, as you two know so well. So it'll be an interesting, uh, we got an interesting summer ahead, kids.